Hello, everybody. Spider here, D5 Car Podcast once again, uh, coming to you uh, with none other than Jimmy the Brick Flick. Of course, this is the uh, Brick Breakdown. So, my man, how are you, bro? Hi, man. I'm doing good. Just joined the TikTok, so follow me on the Brick MMA over at TikTok. No, no, for sure, man. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'll definitely uh, plug in all your uh, your outlets, man, because I know you're all over the place, so that's a good thing. Uh, I'm going to go straight through the prelims because there's quite a bit. This is going to be, of course, for LFA 133 uh, going down this Friday, uh, June 3rd, man. So right off the bat, man, uh, Ian McKee, uh, amateur bout, of course, against Cody uh, Jerebeck, uh, both 3-1, and one, uh, starting off the card at 185 pounds. Um, I mean, we've talked about it before, man. I mean, starting getting the momentum ready and uh, – Hopefully they'll set the, the pace, man, for the rest of the card. Oh yeah, man. And now we're gonna, I'm gonna go up. Uh, the next amateur bout is gonna be uh, David Evanson, one and zero, taking on Jeremiah Humphrey, two and one. This is at 155 pounds, of course. Uh, both three three minute rounds. And uh, I mean, after that one, we're gonna have the pro bouts, of course. This is for the prelims. Uh, I'm gonna go right through them. Uh, Luis Guru uh, taking on. Anthony Valenzuela. Now, both guys are making their, their pro debut. Uh, quite a few fighters on here are making their pro debut, man. Uh, but this is going to be a catch weight at 130 pounds. Uh, of course, um, a lot of them had like five plus fights. A few had two or four. But uh, we've talked about it before, man, real quick. Uh, you mentioned, you know, if you're an amateur, I mean, you definitely get the experience, right, before you go pro. Oh, yeah, man. Especially getting uh, experience on a LFA card is great. And also going pro on LFA. I know there's a few guys on the main card that most of their fights are all in LFA, and I think that's great. No, no, definitely, man. They got a, a lot of good guys on their roster, man. I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure they're in contract, but I mean, they're definitely up there. Uh, we're going to go up one, of course, Miguel Perez, of course, one, once again making this uh, pro debut against Mike Mazariego. This is going to be uh, 125 pounds. Uh, going up, Frankie Sanoles, uh, 0-0. I mean, of course, making the pro debut once again. Uh, against Joe Stafford, man. A lot of 125ers on this card, man. A lot of uh, small guys, you know, of course. Uh, but we've, uh, real quick, man, we've talked about it before, man. I mean, what can people expect from the lighter weights that they, that they can't get from the uh, the super heavyweights or the, you know, the heavyweights in general? Uh, a smaller weights, what we shine at is a lot of action, a lot of movement going forward, and technique. You know, you got to use a lot of technique when you're a smaller guy. And you got somebody else that is small and quick, and you got to use that uh, technique to play a chess match and, you know, find your openings. No, no, definitely, man. Uh, we're going to go up again. Uh, the last two bouts on the prelims, uh, Jurovic Acevedo, one and one uh, taking on Asin Liberato. Of course, both guys, once again, making their uh, – actually, this is going to be 125 pounds. Uh, next one up, uh, Joda Nimomia making his uh, pro debut once again. This is at 145 pounds against Ricky Field. Now, those are the prelims, of course, uh, jumping straight into the card, the main card, man. We're going to go ahead and have a uh, nickname Vanilla Thunder, man. Ben Tynan, 1-0, taking on Trevor Wallace, 4-1 uh, out of Mississippi. Now, this is a heavy weight, of course, a weight limit of 265 pounds. Uh, the big boys, man. So what can we expect from the heavyweight division? Um, it is versus Ben, right? Ben and Trevor? Right. Okay, I was making sure I had the right thing here. So Ben, Ben, he's one and zero as a professional, but he is eight and zero as an amateur, and he has both KO and submissions as an amateur. So I like him at one and zero. In his last amateur fight, he beat a guy that was ten and zero as an amateur. Uh, so this guy has fought some experienced amateur fighters. Uh, his opponent was four and zero before his last bout in LFA, which he, he lost. Um, he was three and two as an amateur, and most of this guy's fights are knockouts, you know. So at heavyweight, um, he's knocking people out. So I think this is a great card for an opener. He got Ben with a lot of experience as an amateur fighting a tough pro fight, and you got Trevor that likes to knock people out. I think it's a great opener card. No, definitely, man. And of course, I mean uh, the card itself, man. We'll, we'll we'll see it. There's a lot of international fighters on this main card. Uh, going up one, uh, we have Jacoby Jones, 3-1, and one, taking on Riley Wiseman, 2-0, and 0, 155 pounds. Uh, what can you tell us about this one? Uh, Jones, he's 3-1 and one as a professional. He's 5-1 and one as an amateur. Uh, as a professional, he was on a three-fight winning streak before he lost his last one. And right. he's got four professional fights, and they're all in LFA. So the guy is getting built up good. He's staying with LFA. And they're not making it easy for him. He's fighting a guy that's 2-0 and as a professional. 
two and zero as an amateur, and he's finished every fight as an amateur and a professional. So I think Riley's going to come out looking for that finish, trying to go three and zero. And I think Jones, if he fights smart and can carry it into the later rounds, I think Jones has got the experience to maybe pull off the fight in the later rounds. No, definitely, man. And I noticed that about both guys, man. I mean, definitely experience as, as amateurs. Uh, we're going to go up one. This is going to be on the welterweight division. Of course, Ryan Charbles, of course, 3-0, and taking on Jeremiah Cutright, 4-3. Uh, and three. Now, on this one, of course, it's the welterweight division. Uh, you know, Ryan, you know, Ryan coming in with momentum, man. So tell us, tell us what we can expect on this one. Yeah. Uh, Ryan is, uh, three and oh, is a professional. He's got two finishes and only one decision. He's six and oh, as an amateur. So he's never, uh, he's never, uh, faced defeat yet. His opponent, Jeremiah, he is, uh, eight and six as an amateur and he's four and four as a pro. Uh, he was on a five-fight win streak before losing his last fight. So the guy's got experience. He's fought tough competition. Um, I, I think this is a tough fight for Ryan, a 3-0 and opponent. You're fighting a 4-4 four and four guy, but the 4-4 four and four guy has got experience from amateur to pro. This guy's got over 20 fights altogether. So I think it's great for Ryan, and uh, I think he'll be tested in this fight. No, I mean, exactly, bro. And uh, talk about experience, man. The next bout, I mean, we have uh, Benjamin Benet, you know, out of Missouri, bro. Mr. Alaska's with a uh, nickname, uh, taking on Trey Waters, 5-0 and out of Florida. Now, the thing about Benet, I don't know if you had seen this, but uh, he's got over 65 amateur fights. Dang, I didn't notice that. As an amateur, when I looked him up, uh, he had 18-4 and four amateur MMA record. Uh, for Benjamin, he was three and zero. He's three and zero as a professional. Uh, all wins are by finish, and he also has a win over Jeremiah that will be fighting right before him. So yeah. that's a lot of local talent. I think they got there together. And then Waters, I mean, he's seven and two as an amateur. He's five and zero, and he only has one decision on his five and zero record. So he likes to finish as well. Um, I think these guys are going to go at it. And it's going to come down to who wants it more. And let me ask you this, because it is going to be in uh, in Denver, in Denver, Colorado, bro. The altitude, man. So do you think the Florida guy is going to have a little bit more trouble uh, dealing with the altitude when it comes to the fight? It can, yes and no. And the only reason I say that is because when I fought in the Tuesday night contender, when I fought in places that I were altitude, I always got that Bosch Rutten 2.0 mask, man. And if, you know, when I fought Nate Smith, he trains at altitude and at team elevation, you know, right. so it says it in the team name. And I outwork that guy from Oklahoma. We're just a little bit over sea level. So if they take it serious and he did the training he needs to, he'll be in great shape. But if he didn't, after round one, you'll find out. No, no, for sure, man. And I just wanted to bring that up because I've, I've heard uh, other fighters say they, they do feel it. And, of course, they don't prepare for it, man. So they get out there, even in New Mexico. You know, they yeah. go out and they, they got south quick, man. So I had to bring that up. Uh, and thank you for that uh, experience, my man. Uh, yep. Going up, man, we have uh, Harris. And I, I do not want to shop up his last name, bro, but it's uh, Taludzik. Uh, yeah. Ford taking on, and this is another complicated uh, individual out of China, Bahatebola, uh, Bahatebolati. I will say, <laughs> uh, but international fighter, man. I mean, out of China. So obviously, man, LFA is doing a great job bringing a lot of the uh, the top prospects from all over the world. Yeah, man. After looking up that fight before and seeing them guys with all the fights, I was like, man, how's that not co-main event? Then I look up the co-main event and I look <laughs> at Harris and he's fought all good opponents as a professional. He's 4-0, 3-0 in LFA. He's 8-1 as an Ami. Um, he lost his first fight as an Ami and has won ever since then. So oh, yeah. the guy is on a 12 fight win streak. Um, as a professional, like I said, he fought really good opponents too. And I went over and looked at his opponent. He's six Oh and one. And you're like, he has a draw. So I look up the draw Well, his opponent that he had a draw to was seven and six. And his best win at six and zero oh is over an eight and six or a one and zero oh guy. So I don't feel like he's had the competition over there where he's from. So I feel like Harris being over here in the states longer uh, is going to really help him fighting with LFA 
um, fighting great opponents. I think it's a great co-main event. I am uh, eager to see how uh, the guy from China does, you know, like I said, because the competition level ain't there. But I think it's a great co-main event. No, no, definitely, man. And, and that's always that's one of the things that I always ask, even from the States, having to travel travel a few days just to get somewhere and then uh, get jet lag and, you know, have to deal with uh, having, having to cut weight once you get there. I mean, it, it's a mess. So hopefully uh, he's done his homework and he's ready, man. Yeah. Now, of course, like I mentioned, that this is going to be this Friday for LFA 133, and uh, it leads us to our main event. Now, our main event, Michael Stack, 145 pounds, taking on Jose Delano out of Brazil, bro. Uh, Michael Stack, 7-1, and one, taking on a 10-2 and two, uh, fighter uh, out of Brazil. And, of course, uh, LFA uh, return fighter uh, Stack, we actually covered him on the last one. And, um, you know, tell us what you think is going to happen on this one, man. Uh, yes, Stack, man, he, he's made a statement in LFA in his last three fights. Uh, he suffered one loss in LFA, and since then he's been on a three-fight win streak, and he earned this title fight, you know. Uh, he's not training at a gym or training with a big coach. I mean, he might be, but that's not why he got the title fight is what I'm saying. This guy earned the title fight in LFA, and sometimes that's hard to do. And his opponent is on a nine-fight win streak, and this guy – has fought some tough competition. His last two opponents, one being nine, one and one, and another opponent being 14 and four. Uh, fought nothing but good opponents from the time he came up. And I believe he's from Brazil. And most of the times their uh, records can be choppy on their opponents. And uh, I like his competition. I think this is a great matchup. A guy that uh, is coming up in LFA and a guy that came up in Brazil fighting top opponents and they're fighting for the 145 title no i mean definitely man and it's gonna be it's a great many main event i mean I'm, I'm looking forward to it of course this is gonna happen uh in denver colorado but for those that can't be you know cage side i mean you can go to the uh, ufc fight pass of course subscribe and uh i wanted to bring up a few things man thank you for helping me with this but uh you, you got a gig coming up man can you tell us a little bit about that yeah man uh i'm super excited i got called to uh, do some commentary for the XFN 381, I believe it is, for uh, Dell Cook over here in uh, Sand Spring, or Tulsa, Oklahoma, at the River Spirit Casino. And it's going to be live on UFC Fight Pass. They will have a kickboxing tournament and some MMA fights. I'll be commentating the MMA fights, and I get the pleasure of commentating Frank Mir's daughter's fight. It's going to be her third professional fight. And uh, I'm super excited to have the honor uh, to go from Frank Mir commentating my fight and put a, uh, putting a belt around my waist to me uh, being able to commentate his daughter's fight live on UFC Fight Pass. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to bring that up because you had told me about that story, you know, that you won that title that he actually uh, worked and uh, he was able to put that belt around your waist. So that's actually, you know, it's great the way uh, life goes, man. Full circle, you know? Yeah, man. So I told him it was an honor, man. I can't wait. And. I'm super excited and I'm looking, you know, to book up all kinds of gigs. I, I am literally in the process of uh, making an investment for my own gym. I want to start teaching jujitsu. I want to start competing in jujitsu again. Uh, no, I do not plan on fighting. I just want to compete in jujitsu and, <laughs> you know, teach jujitsu a couple days a week and hopefully it will prevail from there. Hoping to push my book, have my link out to my book within a, uh, the end of the month. I'm hoping to have it out by June 24th when I do my commentating gig because it's great to be able to announce on UFC Fight Pass. So that's what I'm really pushing. And uh, yeah, follow me on TikTok at The Brick MMA. Also on my Instagram at The Brick MMA. Oh, for sure, man. And real quick before we wrap this up, man, I'm actually wearing this shirt, bro. Uh, Only Smile. And it's from our, our music. What is it? Only what? Only Slams. Oh, okay. But uh, Christopher Bubba Flores, he actually promotes the uh, Texas Cash Wrestling. So this is one of the shirts on there. And uh, you have a story about that, man. We actually, You actually know the guy. So tell us uh, how you met him. Uh, man, well, I used to train with him. He came into the gym um, quite a few times, and we just became really good friends. I even uh, – let's see if you can see it. That's a yeah. RFA or uh, RLF. That's my wife's initials. I didn't like wedding rings, man. So I got my wife's initials, and my boy Christopher did it, man, uh, out of his house, man. I went to his house, and he just tatted up my finger. And uh, we've always been boys. Um, 
hopefully maybe I'll be able to get down there one time and catch an event. He's always been big on catch wrestling. I didn't know nothing about catch wrestling until I met him. And I love the things he throws in there and the little differences in catch wrestling and actually Brazilian jiu-jitsu. No, no, definitely, man. I just wanted to plug him in right quick, man. But uh, once again, my man, I just thank you for helping me cover this. And uh, we'll see you uh, come fight night, man. We'll see who wins, who, who doesn't. And uh, we'll talk again soon, bro. Yeah, so most definitely, time. man. Everybody else, follow the man. Give me the brick flick, of course. Follow him on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Don't follow him home, of course, because you might not like it. But uh, anything else, <laughs> follow him up. Nah, that's board. good, man. I just keep, we'll keep breaking these things down. Yes, sir. Everybody else, this is FIDA, the Fight Car Podcast. Till next time, follow up.